Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, welcome to another Sunday. We're excited to be here. I think the date, we're not recording Sunday morning, but we're recording for Sunday morning. So the date is July the 5th. 5th. Yeah. It's July 5th. And hope you guys are watching this. Hope you have a good time. We love studying God's Word, and we love sharing and uh, even before we do this, Hector and I have a good time laughing and joking back and forth and then, and then bringing up good points. And, and uh, Do you enjoy it, Hector? I'm sure you love it, coming and, come and meeting early and getting educated, right? I'd, I'd be, I'm going to be completely him. honest, there's no place I would rather be than with this guy right now. Wow, dude. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. See? And you know what that shows? Part of our lesson. Our lesson is about <laughs> suffering. And I'm suffering when I'm with him, <laughs> but it's bringing him joy. So that brings me joy. It's also about joy. It's <laughs> yeah, also about it's joy. It's about joy. So our lesson today is hope leads to joy. And we want to talk about suffering for Christ can deepen our relationship with Christ, right? And it brings us to the question of the day. And I know you're ready because we've been doing this a long time. Hector, what brings <laughs> you joy? What brings me joy? Well, right off the top of my head, you know, I would say a ribeye. You know, you like steak, brother? I love steak. I, you know, I would say a ribeye steak. For those that at work, they don't call me Rabbi Hector. They call me Ribeye Hector rib because Hector. they know that, that I like a good steak, right? So they call me Ribeye Hector. But I would say ice cream from Dairy Queen, a Blizzard, Snickers with Twix. You know, I love that. That brings me great joy, right? Uh, pizza. pizza? We, just, we just had pizza. You know, we had, uh, me and my kids had pepperoni pizza. And me and my wife had grilled chicken with pineapple. My, my son Ezekiel is like, who puts pineapple on their pizza? Ooh, that's Th this delicious. guy does. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this guy does. But on a serious note, what brings me the greatest joy, it's found in Scripture, brother. It's found in Luke 15, 10. And it says, likewise, I say to you, there is joy. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And so we work with a lot of young people maybe even some adults, but when that young person, when that adult, that teenager, when they make the decision to follow Christ, but not only to follow him, but to make him Lord of their life, that brings joy to my heart. Better than ribeyes, better than ice cream, better than pizza. And I'm glad you right? corrected yourself. <laughs> if you would have ended on food, I was going to bring up something more uh, scriptural and yes, ministerial. Yes. Because for me, what brings me joy, and I've really experienced it a lot, is during this this virus time and and people are in need we've been bringing the trailers of food in and giving it out serving and i have so much joy even to the point where i'm exhausted and i'm tired but somebody will call and we have milk in our refrigerator we got boxes of food here i'll come to the church and get it for them because i just want to be a faithful servant unto god and especially when we're serving all these other churches and their pastors are picking up for their memberships Brother, there's no better joy than that. I mean, yeah. that is just awesome. Than that someone is. being blessed, right? By Amen. The, by the hard work that you do. You know, I mean, maybe you should stop complaining so much. You know? Yeah. If it brings you that much joy, you know, <laughs> maybe the complaint goes. Who's complaining? <laughs> hey, let's start off with a word of prayer. Yeah, we'll let's, get, pray. let's pray. We need to pray. Yeah. All right. Dear Lord, and precious Father, I just thank you, God, for this beautiful day. I ask that you bless us today as we study your word, and I just pray that we can all apply it to our lives the way you want us to, Father. I just pray that you use us, and I pray for the listener out there that you can just open up their hearts and minds to really understand what we're saying. Father, I love you, I praise you, and I worship you, and I thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So before we get started, we're going to be reading out of 1 Peter. Yes. We'll be in the fourth chapter in 1 Peter. Great book. Been having a great time reading it. Uh, before we get started, Hector, I know you got a message to the leader. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to read that. It's found in our Sunday school book, and it says that... Uh, Say, Scripture teaches clearly that God is sovereign over creation. And when I read that, I was excited, brother, because uh, I'm doing a paper. I'm doing an essay for, uh, in the classes that I'm taking right now in the summer. And, and it, you know, it's obviously about God, right? And I, I was thinking today, just today, that, you know, God is all powerful, right? He's all sovereign, right? And, and so I looked up the word sovereign in the, in the dictionary, and it said that God is the supreme authority. And it said, God is in control of all things. That's what, that's what the definition of sovereign is. And I thought that was pretty cool because I was going through that in class. And then when I read this today, I was like, oh, man, that's perfect. You know, that's the way God works. You know what I mean? You're right. studying something, then, th you know, this hits you. But it says that scripture teaches clearly that God is sovereign over creation. At times, this can be difficult to understand, particularly when facing 
suffering, yet even in the most difficult circumstances, we can know that God is at work. In fact, the Bible teaches that through difficult times, we are being shaped into the likeness of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I really like that, that little message there. Yep. Very to start good. us off. The, the whole setting that we're still in here is we're reading in Peter. And he's, this whole first epistle of Peter was, was to Asia Minor. And it was to the church that was really, really suffering and going through all kinds of trials and tribulations. And they were experiencing a lot of difficulties. And if it wasn't for godly people like Peter to step up and say, hey, man, stay focused, stay focused. And I love this, Hector, because these are times that when Peter wrote this, that these, the church was actually under a lot of persecution. They were suffering. And there's nothing like God's people stepping up and blessing them and then reminding them because we all need to work on that. And that's been a theme of our of our Bible studies is that we have to work on our relationship with God. We've got to work to be close to God. It just doesn't happen by wishful thinking. It takes effort on our part to draw closer to God. And I want to reiterate, salvation is free. There's no working for that. But you do have to work on your relationship. Yeah. Falling deeper and deeper in love with Christ. That's good. So, and that's, good. And that's our setting for Yeah, it. that's good because, you know, they were suffering back then. But is there suffering now? You know, yeah, of course there is. And sometimes when you're suffering, when you're going through the storm, right, it can feel like you're all by yourself. And you see, and, the, and what they had here, the early church, what they, had, they had each other to mm -hmm. encourage each other. They, they had Peter to remind them of God's uh, goodness and God's grace and, and, and you know, to, to, to have a... a mindset of Christ is what he was pretty much preaching to them you know when you're going through when you're going through the storm think of Christ is what they would what, what pretty much what it, our study is about you know but let, let's 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 start yeah, let's with go the, to our first verse yeah. first Peter chapter 4 verses 1 through 2 you're going to read that right it, yes thank you it says therefore since Christ suffered in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same understanding because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin in order to live the remaining time in the flesh, no longer for human desires, but for God's will. First Peter 4, 1 through 2. You know, and that's, that's true, because a lot of times Christian life, is, it's uh, portrayed as something like peaceful and calm. Without trials. Serenity, <laughs> yeah, no trials. And that could be further from the truth, because Christians suffer and they go through. And the reason why is because this world is so corrupt. And this world is evil and full of things that are bad. And if it wasn't for if if godly people, if it wasn't for godly people, man, don't tell him where it would be. It's bad enough that we're not even stepping up to the plate like we should now. It would be even worse if the Christians weren't around. So because we live in this sinful and lost world, mm -hmm. you know, I love Peter here because he's trying to he's he's reminding everybody we got to put those desires away because it, a lot of these are mental games. I want you, to, Hector. You know, I was reading a study and it was saying. There's more suicides and people going into depression now because they're at home all day long and, and they don't have that human interaction with others. And uh, we were created to have that human yeah. in, in reaction, the fellowship, interaction. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship with believers. And, and so these people are having suffering from loneliness and depression and things like that. Peter right here is warning us against those things. And it, what he's saying is, man, if you focus on the things of God, then you've got purpose, then you've got hope, then you've got... You, it's it's a new way of life, but we have to we have to physically, mentally, strategically work on our walk with God, and when we do that, that's when God promises tremendous amounts of blessing. Yeah, and it goes on to say our study goes on to say that the Christian life, even though it's blessed, it's not always easy. You know, in fact, it's a battle. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a war going on. You know, because when there's a war, well, who's our enemy? Who are we going at war with? You know, enemy, the enemy is Satan. You know, we're, we're fighting against him. And it says that, you know, when, when we are to arm ourselves with Christ's mindset, having an attitude like Jesus is a powerful weapon against trials and temptations, right? And so I was thinking about that, and it, it kind of mentions it here. It says, let's think back to other passages in the Bible of Scripture that teach us about the war we're fighting, right? And so I've, it, it kind of talks to, takes us to 2 Corinthians 10 three and five. And I'll read that, John. It says, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down, pulling down strongholds. Amen. And I know they reference another verse in Ephesians, yeah, right? They, they reference Ephesians 
chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. And uh, when, we, when we say these verses, you can pause it, look them up, read along with us. Very, very powerful verses. This one is Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Listen to this. It says, and uh, this is uh, Paul writing. Paul says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I love this verse. It's a very, com- it's a very well-known verse. But listen to it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, mm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And this is a powerful, powerful verse because it's kind of telling us and it reiterates that there's a battle, but when a lot of people think battle, they think of a physical battle, you know, you know, uh, with, the, with weapons and stuff. And this is talking about a mind battle. This mm. is talking about a, a heart battle, about a spiritual battle that, 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 uh, that really tears down people. And Paul says he wants you to acknowledge that, it, that, that we're not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against evil things. Mm. And that we have to build the strongholds in our lives so that we can stand against those things. Yeah, and if you think about it, the context is when you're suffering, right? So what happens when you're suffering? They suffered back then. We suffer now, right? And so when you're actually going through the storm, when you're suffering, what happens? You start thinking, like, why would God allow this? Why would God do this to me? Why, why this? And you, we start blaming God. And that's all mindset. You know, the, 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 the enemy is putting things in our mind. And so now we start turning against God. We start blaming God. Start right? whining. Yeah. Acting silly. We're complaining, right? And, 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 and through, through our suffering, right? Yes. Through our suffering, right? And so it says that God has equipped us with the mind of Christ. Amen. And it says when we face hardships, having the mind of Christ means looking beyond our immediate experience to God's bigger purposes. And the ultimate joy, there is that word again, joy, that awaits when we endure. When we endure. When we endure. Endure Endure through the suffering. Endure Mm -hmm. through the hardships, right? And so let's go on to our question. And it it says, uh, we're going to go ahead and read the question. Question one, it says, what obstacles tend to keep us from thinking like Christ? Man, what obstacles tend to keep you from thinking like Christ? Man, you know, one of the things that I, when I studied this lesson and I was thinking about it, the biggest thing for me is when I deal with other people, I can have that Christ because I, I want to love them. I have to work more if it's my family, right? We all have our little weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I can tend to lash out quicker against family. And I share that about me personally because I want you to put that personal in your life. What, what triggers you? You know, I've seen and you've seen, we've seen youth that it might be a great youth, uh, a young man, a young woman that, wow, they're, they're, they're solid, they're strong. And then you hear them talk to their mom or dad. Or their dad will say something, what? And they just get triggered like that. Because something in there over time, uh, over and over, you, you start having that mentality. And I'm telling you, stay away from that. So if you know that's an issue, don't say, well, I'm just not going to, I'll just ignore them. That, no, change yourself. Make the changes. You know, dad, I'm sorry for talking to you. Mom, I'm sorry for yeah. acting like this. Uh, brother, I'm sorry. Sister, find out those things, recognize them then begin to battle against them where they're no longer taking over your life. But that's very good because it's so easy to get triggered by different things from thinking like Christ would think. Yeah, and it, you know, you, you hit it on the nail, brother, everything you mentioned, because what obstacles tend to keep us from thinking like Christ? Anger. Anger. Jealousy, mm-hmm. right? Selfishness, right? Mm-hmm. And so usually when we're suffering, we get angry, right? Usually when, when we're suffering, you know, we get... There's a lot of selfishness. Me, me, me. Why me? Why me, me, me? Well, you're not. What about all the other people that are suffering, right? Yeah. And so that, that was a good question to, to, and to talk about right now, to discuss. And let's move on to our next scriptures. And John, would you read that? First Peter 4, 12 through 14. You don't tell me what to do. No, I'm just <laughs> I'll read it. Dear friends, don't be surprised when the fury ordeal comes among you to test you as if something unusual were happening to you. Happening to you. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may also rejoice with great joy great. when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed, ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed. Yeah. 
because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Wow. That, Powerful that, verse. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it says, when something difficult happens in our lives, we become sad. We become angry. We're tempted to cry or lash out. We run away or close ourselves off. Remember I said suffering, sometimes we feel lonely. I think we kind of do that to ourselves, right? And honestly, you know, that's appropriate response, right? But as Christians, as Christians, when we have difficult circumstances, John, you know, it's a perfect opportunity for us to show the difference Jesus makes in our lives. You know, do, you know when we're suffering, when the, when the Christian person, when the believer, when the follower of Christ is suffering and we act like the world would react, you know, do we really have Jesus in our lives? You know, and this is the perfect opportunity for us to show the difference that Jesus makes in our lives, you know. And so if we have the mindset of Christ, we're not going to lash out. We're not going to complain. We're not going to cry. We're not going to get angry. You know, we're not going to close ourselves off, right? We have that mindset of Christ, you know. And so that's what I was thinking, of, that, that we should rejoice, you know, when we're suffering. And that sounds kind of ridiculous, right? I was like, what do you mean you're going to have joy through the suffering? But when we do that, when, when we rejoice in suffering, you know, we should consider it an honor to suffer much like Jesus did because of our faith that we have. Jesus right. suffered, right? Yes, amen. You know? And I think, I think reacting in those times of, of, of tribulation and turmoil is one of the biggest witnessing tools mm -hmm. there is because it's an opportunity for the world, for your family, for the lost to see the power of God in the change that it has done to you. It's easy to get mad. It's easy to fly off the handle. All of that, if you ask me, all goes to selfishness because we always want to feel good and take care and it's about me, me, me. But when we can separate that and say, man, it's not about me. It's about lifting up other people and we do that. What a chance. What an opportunity to separ separate yourself. And when we, what, we, what did we say when you separate yourself, set apart? You're holy. Mm. And that's what it's called. That's what we're called to do. And it says... And the verses we, uh, that you read says, if you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, right? And the basic meaning of blessed is to be happy, right? Happy are you. Blessed are you. Happy are you, right? It can be translated right there. But happiness comes when good things happen to us, right? But what this scriptures are teaching us is that we should have joy. Yeah. Joy is, is, is better. It's bigger. It, it, it's more fulfilling than happiness, right? Because happiness can be taken away. We can be you happy. Think Paul was yeah. happy when he got taken to prison. He wasn't happy about that, no, having to go spend time in prison. But it never stole his joy. And yeah. some of the best books in the Bible were written by him about joy. Even yeah, it was written by a man in prison. Yeah, who was beaten and suffering. That's a huge difference between happiness and yeah, joy. Yeah, well, you know, and you said it perfectly because he was going through a trial, right? A trial mm -hmm. in his life. He goes, but you know, it wasn't fun for him. It wasn't happy for him. But because God was with him. Because God will live him, he can have joy in any circumstance. And so can we. Amen. We can be joyful in any circumstance. You know, I was, telling, I was sharing with you earlier that, that when I read this, it reminded me of that scripture in Nehemiah where it says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm. Amen. And so let's move on to the questions, John. I know you wanted to talk about question four. Was that mm -hmm. correct? Question four says, what hinders us from rejoicing when times are difficult? And it goes back to kind of the theme that we've been talking about. What? What uh, hinders us from having that joy a lot of times is our mindset, is our mind. Because we haven't got our, our mind right with God, and we haven't realized that that's the biggest way that Satan can attack us. You know, I look a lot of times, you know, I, if you think of just regular warfare, you don't always attack the, the, right there in the front where all the defense and armor is. You know, I always say this, if, if Satan came up to me and says, follow me, and he had a pitchfork, and, yeah, and he's all you know, fiery, Man, get away from me. You know, I love God. You know, I'd get away from that. But it doesn't happen like that. It comes through the side here, through anger issues, through selfishness, through our mindset yeah. not being right. That's how we me, begin to me, fall. Me, me, me. Yeah, a lot me, of selfishness. Me, me. And yeah. before you know it, yeah. you were right here before God. And before you know it, you're way over there where you don't want to be. And you, and you wake up one day, how did I get here? How did I get in this lifestyle? How did I get to be where I'm at today? How come I don't have a relationship with my mom or my dad? How come I'm going through all these things? And we, oh, God, you don't love me. It has nothing to do with the love God had. God came and died for you. 
You know who it is? It's you. You haven't done the things that it takes to get close to God. Paul said that, that man, we should guard our relationship, that we should fight for it, and that we need to hold on to it. You have to. If you're, if you're going to have a successful relationship with Christ, you need to fall in love with him mm. every single day, because if not, you're going to go further and further away. Amen. And, and so that one, that to me, the, the hindering part was having that right mindset. And I think that's what we're sitting, the whole theme of this meeting. Yeah, we talked about anger. Lesson. Yeah, we talked about anger and selfishness. And, and all that hinders you from rejoicing when times are difficult. You know, because it's like, why me? You yeah. know, why can't it be John suffering? Why am I suffering? Yeah, I never suffer. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of First Peter four fifteen through nineteen. Hector, you want to read that? I'll read that. It says, "Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in having that name. Wow! For the time has come for judgment to begin with God's household. Let me read that again." For the time has come for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who disobey the gospel of God? And if a righteous person is saved with difficulty, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while doing what is good. Uh, that's that's some scripture right there. Yeah, right? you know, Peter included, you know, in this scriptures a word of clarification to us. He was speaking of suffering for righteousness sake. If we suffer, we suffer for righteousness sake. And he's talking about in these verses, it's all wrapped up. And it was a few uh, lessons that we did back and we really hammered away. In fact, I wouldn't say we, we both did, but you really hammered. And I like that on the obedience. Yeah, man, when yeah. we're obedient to God. A lot of these things were shielded from. You know, I think of a duck. When, you, when a duck is in the water, and if you throw water on a duck, what happens? It just flows right off him. His feathers are in such a way that nothing penetrates him. And I think that's the way we can be that strong when we're in God's Word. The little things that would knock down ordinary people would not even touch us. It would not penetrate us. It would be like ducks, man, because we have that Word of God shielding us and protecting us. And it's through that obedience that we build that. Yeah, That's says, powerful. I looked it up. It's, our obedience directly affects our connection with God. Yeah, you went back and looked it up, right? <laughs> I, like, I wanted to say it again. Yeah. Because it it's is. so true. It is. It's you know, very, because very what true. happens when we disobey, that connection is broken. But our obedience, man, that just directly affects our, our connection with and, God. And then when know? we suffer, for, when we begin to suffer, and, the, and he says it right here, if you suffer for Christ's namesake, Mm. That's a blessing, man, yeah. when you're doing that. Yeah. And when you suffer like that, sometimes you want, you know, we were, to dis you and I were discussing earlier, there's a lot of people that cry, why me this and why that and why, and instead of crying it, say, God, get me through this. You know, what if Paul would have just wrote the letter of, of any of the ones he wrote, Ephesians, uh, Colossians, whatever, when, when Paul wrote all those letters, what if he would have been whining, I'm still in prison, yeah. God hasn't helped me, yeah. why am I here, la, la, la. He didn't do any of that. How many, Chris, how many of us do that? I've done that. You do that a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we've all done that, right? We've all whined and cried about the situation we're in. And we got to step back and say, God, why do you have me here? Because a lot of times that suffering is a refining process. Yeah. When you refine something, it means that you make it better, stronger. You, 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 you make it whole. And that's, what we, that's where we need to be. Yeah, you know, the, the notes here says that, that suffering for bad behavior is a cause for shame and repentance. Amen. You know, but it says, but, when, but we have no shame when we suffer for following Christ. Instead, Amen. we can celebrate that God is pleased with us and is working in and through us. You know, I love that. You know, I love that part right there. And so, you know, you were talked about it earlier that suffering is a part of a refining process, you know, that's found in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. But in 2 Corinthians, John Chapter 6, verses 4 through 10, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church that in everything we do, we are called to see ourselves as ministers to the Christians and to the lost world. Right, and he also hit some key points, and we're going to go over them with you right now. And that, once again, is in uh, Second, Second Second Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6, four, 4 through 10. And he said, by enduring hardship, even through being beaten and thrown in prison. These are the things that Paul kind of went through and was talking about and about ministering 
to the Christians and to the lost world yeah. that he did. He endured that hardship even when he was beaten, put in prison. Some of the best work of Paul was done at that time. Yeah, he didn't whine. I mean, right. That's right. He was shipwrecked and he was thrown in prison. He was beaten. Right. But it also the second point says that through hard work, sleepless nights and hunger. In other words, he didn't complain. I'm hungry. You know, he didn't. How whine. many Christian people today, <laughs> godly people here would rather not help oh, because I, I stayed up late last night, so I can't go help today or I was going to help but it's my day off oh, man yeah. Paul Paul put all of that aside yeah. this world is temporary and if you if you're thinking like oh woe is me I got to take care of myself or or I wanted well I was going to go eat at some fancy restaurant today knowing full well that there's need there's need of people then that tells me you're not you don't have kingdom mentality so yeah it's like I had a hard week at work so you know I really can't serve this weekend I can't go and help you. Sorry, John. I already told you I forgive you. <laughs> when you said that last time. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. you know, exactly. you make excuses, right? But Paul didn't make excuses. Paul did. He worked hard. He had sleepless nights. He was hungry, right? But, you know, he was there. He wanted still to minister to Christians and to the lost world. And the, the next, next, and the next, next point, point was by living in purity. Paul lived in purity. Paul wasn't married. And, you know, Paul took it like, I want to be like Paul. Paul said, I don't even want to be married because I don't, I don't have time for a wife. I'm serving God in his kingdom. I'm a kingdom builder. You know, how could he even be married when he was suffering and traveling and preaching and being beaten and all these things? He gave it all for Christ. And he's saying that's what we need to do. Give it all for Christ. So you want to be more like Paul? Amen. I want to. Not married. Well, no choice now. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get me to fight with me there. <laughs> and the next point says, by knowledge, patience, kindness, and love. Mm. In other words, he wanted to grow. And, you know, and he wanted to help others. You know, he wanted to help the Christian and the lost. You know, he was always looking to, to be a blessing to someone. Amen. And, you know, the next one that I hear, that Paul did it through God's word, through the Holy Spirit, and the power of God. That's good. That's what Paul, that was Paul's biggest theme. To do it all in the name of the Lord, all in the name of being a kingdom builder. Powerful stuff. Yeah, and he also did it by righteousness and through false accusations, right? And so, you know, he was trying to be righteous, but it's very hard to be righteous when you're being falsely accused of doing something, yeah. right? And it's like, man, he couldn't win. He couldn't win, but he, he chose to be righteous. That way he can be a great example to the Christian and to the lost. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Paul at this point didn't even care if you falsely. You know, there's a lot of people, <gasps> brother so-and-so said this about me, or brother so-and-so looked at me wrong, or sister did this, or the way she walked right past me without saying hi. What a bunch of babies, man. <laughs> Shut up with that stuff, right? Come Paul, on. Paul over here Come was on, being man. false accused, and he just powered his way through everything. <laughs> Paul is powerful, and we can cry about the littlest and dumbest things in our church, and we got to stop that. You want to live a Christian life? Start applying these principles that we're talking about right here. You just said, Hector, by righteousness and through false accusation. Paul didn't care if he had false accusation. He just kept worrying about yeah. his Christian brethren and the lost world. That so, was his big thing. So what's another word for people that are being like babies and stuff and being dumb? And What, what would you say is another word? <laughs> I'd say that they're a bunch of babies and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one here, by always living with discipline and enjoy. <laughs> Living with discipline. We went over the discipline side. Yeah. And then the joy step. There's joy and there's happiness. Right now he's happy because he's trying to make me <laughs> discuss <laughs> some other stuff that we're not supposed to bring up. But Paul said here by always living with discipline and enjoy. I think discipline, and we've hit on it, and I've always known it's important, but I, I, it really laid, it's raised its level in my mind because those that are disciplined, because discipline isn't just say like, oh, you're disciplined, I'm not. No, discipline is something... We have to work on it. We're as disciplined as we work on it. We're as disciplined as we put ourselves through those trials and tribulations and sufferings. And how they came out and affected us determines how disciplined we are. Because if we're not striving for it, then you won't be disciplined. But if you're constantly working to do better, you know, we were laughing and joking. And I'll just be honest with you. I wasn't, you know, last couple of uh, lessons, I used the word idiot. Oh, they're, they're being idiots. Or don't be an idiot. And my wife said, that's so horrible. Don't be using that word. And, you know, people, it's just rough. And, and I said, but that's me. But okay. But you know what? Instead of saying, no, that's me. Too bad. Just deal with it. I'm not going to say that. You know why? Because I love you guys. 
And if I'm offending and it does sound a little harsh and I prayed about it, I'm not going to use that word. Now, who's trying to get me to use it? <laughs> Hector. <laughs> well, I'm not going to, Hector. You can't make well, me do it. I'm proud of you, Johnny. You didn't, you didn't you fall go. in the trap. There you go. You called them babies. You didn't call them idiots. <laughs> you know, that's an improvement. That's you know? Hey, let's get a question six because we're running well, out of time. Let's finish up. I had a couple more points. It says, Paul recognized that although they may have lost everything this world could give, they gain what this world could not take away. And do you know what that is, John? The joy. The joy. They can't Ex take your joy exactly. away. You take everything else away. You can't take the joy mm. away. You can take the happiness away. Yeah. But you cannot take away the joy of the Lord, right? Amen. Because it's a straight. He goes, by having the mind of Christ and rejoicing that we get to share in his sufferings, we can know that God is at work in our lives. Amen. And he is using us to impact others. This is a purpose we were made for, and it brings great satisfaction no one wants to suffer, but when we do, we should do it and see it as an opportunity to glorify God. Amen. And that's what I wanted to end with is that when people see you suffering and you're not being a baby, you know, you're not being that other word we're not going to mention anymore in our lessons, hopefully, you know, that means that we're being a great example for others to see, to glorify God, to glorify Christ, to say, hey, you know, Brother John, when he's suffering, he doesn't have a pity party. You know, he goes and he starts serving even more. Amen. You know, why? Because he has joy. You know, the world can take away his possessions like Job, right? He can take away his family. He can take away everything. But the one thing that this world can't take away is his joy, our joy, your joy. So, you know, I pray that you remember that if you're suffering or if you're going to go through a, a trial or a temptation or whatever it may be. You're gonna be maybe you've gone through the storm and you, you reflect back and you don't like the way you handled that. Have the mind of Christ. That's what this lesson is about, to have the mind of Christ and to rejoice when there's suffering in your life. Amen. And wh what were you going to go to, the question? No, I'm going to, we'll skip that because we're out of time, but I do want to get on to the live it out at number 11. Okay. And I want you to think about something. And Hector, answer this one real quick and then I'll answer it too. Or I can do first if you want me to. When has someone helped you overcome a struggle with the sin in your life? And I'll share mine real fast. Mine hit me hard, uh, and I've shared this, my testimony a lot. My son, it was a tragic, a tragedy that happened that they broke into my house, cut my son. It was a big deal on my oldest son, and he almost died. And we got the guy, and I'll never forget, I had so much hatred and anger in my heart. I couldn't get rid of it. And I was a Christian. I, and even at that time, I said, God, I don't know why you allowed this to happen. People said I had to forgive him, and I wasn't going to forgive that guy because I couldn't. And it wasn't until I would never forget we were in the courtroom. He'd been found guilty, that guy, and, and uh, my dad says, hey, we're going to pray right now, and you're going to forgive that guy. And I said, Dad, I can't forgive him. It's impossible. I have so much anger and hatred. He says, you've got to forgive him, not for his sake, but for your sake, because God created us not to have this unforgiveness in our life. And when you have it in there, it separates your relationship. But I don't care how close you want to be to God, if you've got unforgiveness there, it you can't do it. And I'll never forget, I prayed there, but I, rem I remember if, if my dad, maybe God would have reached another way, but it took my dad to step up and say, hey, my, my dad's kind of a, you know, he's got a lot of, he's an authoritarian, and he's going to say, hey, we're going to pray, and you're going to forgive him. But the forgiveness has to come from my heart, not yeah. from him telling me. <laughs> yeah. But I, when I prayed, I, 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 I generally forgave him, and I was free. I acted, it was like something came off my shoulders. I could breathe again. I could live again. I was free. And that's what was the power of Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you have one, brother? Well, you know, I mean, I was just going to say, uh, you know, it says, when has someone helped you overcome a struggle with the sin in your life? And, you know, I mean, I, I think back of, you know, maybe past uh, sins, maybe my anger. You know, I've had counsel from, from godly brothers and sisters. You know, uh, I've had my wife, you know, kind of check me on my anger. I, I've had my, my own mom check me on my anger. And so I think stuff like that, I, you know, See, if you put me on the spot, I'd probably have to point to something like that. You know, sometimes we can have an anger problem, right? And it does take uh, godly brothers and sisters, your mom, your, your wife, to, you know, someone close to you to say, stop saying that word. You know, it sounds right. like, you know what I mean? And so that's just something that, that we need to kind of be uh, attentive to, you know, especially when it's someone close to you, someone that, that, you know, you can trust. You know you can trust your wife. And so that, that's good stuff, man. That was a good Amen. lesson. It was a good Suffering lesson Suffering for Christ can lead you closer in a stronger walk with the Lord. Just Amen. remember that. Amen. And quit having a pity party and worrying about yourself, being a baby about it. But get out there and work on that relationship with God and start serving others. And you watch how you will be blessed. Great Amen. lesson, baby. I enjoyed it. God Love bless you. God bless you all. Thank you.